Hello, everyone, and welcome to my podcast, where we talk flowers, floral arranging, gardening, and more. I'm Tiffany Rutkowski, and my husband and I are the owners of Creative Designs by Tiffany, a floral and gift shop located in Dodgeville, New York. To find out more and stay up to date, visit our website at cdbytiffany.wordpress.com and connect with us on Facebook and Instagram. I'm passionate about all things beautiful, mainly flowers, and teaching you how to savor all the things of it. You'll hear tips, tricks, and from some of my highly esteemed friends in the business. Today, I'm joined by Dave Warner producer of Tiffany Talk. I feel like you need a drum roll when we do that. I, you know, I can actually do that. I don't have it queued up. But, can you know, yet, I, can, I can do stuff like this. I can, there you go. You the know. minute you, <laughs> don't you hear it, you know it's Dave coming in. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't have it queued. But, well, yeah. that's all right. It sounded good there on that delay, so yeah. that's good. So, yeah. And we're recording today from the beautiful My Little Fall studio, and I'm looking at it when the music was going off, and it's really bright in here today. It must be because it's finally sunny out at the there, first time in yeah. seven times or whatever. <laughs> that or I added one more light. You it might know. be that. Yeah, yeah it may be that too. one more over there. It, but yeah. It might be. Well, that's it. It's what I was looking at. Like, it's very bright out today, which is yeah. a nice thing. I'm savoring the end of that because now it's September and our house was 45 this morning when I woke up. and It was it's, chilly. Yeah, it's, it's dipping yeah. down a little bit too quickly. So I mean, we've really not had a lot of sunny days this no. summer. It's been just miserable, <laughs> yes, to be honest. It has. <laughs> it has. It's one of those things, those late boxes they tell you you can get that they kind of perk up up your mood in the winter for oh, people yeah. that live upstate. So I think that might be something I have to invest in. Yeah, that are happy pills. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. vitamin D. You just need a little bit of sun. Yeah. That's all. So I often think of that. And I'm like, I wonder what it'd be like if we actually had sun all the time around here. People You'd would be, be in Texas. That's Well, that's <laughs> true. That might be. But or even, Arizona. Uh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's nice. But, you know, the cloudy days I got so used to, too. And my niece, I, my um, mother-in-law was telling me, my niece, she came out, too, like when we had a long stretch of the days that it was all dreary and she'd come out and her eyes would just like you couldn't even adjust to the sun because you weren't used to it and i said no nope, i feel that that's been about 10 days we had some stretches in the spring same thing you couldn't even see anything because you came outside and what is this sun yeah. <laughs> so anyway so today um we're i'm gonna roll with this today so get ready everybody I'm, i can see the sponsorships or the i don't have the sponsorships <laughs> hang on <laughs> I'm, I'm getting out of myself <laughs> people listening going oh no here we go here well, she goes yes, she's on a, she's it is on a it's, here we go that's that drum oh, roll now. Again, no, I don't have the roll. You know, I could, I could add a roll. You got to have to add a roll, or we'll get somebody in here. I just, have the, rim, I just have the rim yeah. shot. See, you know, that works. That but works. If it's sad. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that uh, might. Uh, Hopefully, that's not the theme for today. <laughs> so, but when we have that little drum roll, though, we could have somebody in here actually playing the drums or going with it. You know, and yeah, yeah I'll work a, on one, that. Yeah, one of those days. <laughs> so live music. Anyway, yes. Well, anyway, today is. I, I guess we'll go with the and more part of this. So um, we've talked floral, floral arranging. We did that last month, which it seems like it's been more than a month since the last time I recorded, but I, I guess it was just a month. Um, and then the gardening right now, I don't know if you know what powdery mildew is. Oh, we're looking over here. Um, so you got to put that camera behind you because I look naturally at the person that's sitting here and I look at these cameras, which we'll get into that today maybe, um, <laughs> how old school I can be. Um, but anyway, so we've talked basically about all that stuff. And then today, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of all of these intros, we're a floral and gift shops. So there's a couple of little gifty items that I brought today to kind of feature just so you have an idea what's in the shop. People don't really realize when they come in that um, originally when I took over the store, the woman who had it, she had all the Dodgeville apparel um, and they knew that, you know, she had all of that. Somewhat knew the flowers. Now at this point, I've kind of shifted from flowers to more gift stuff. We do still have some Dodgeville apparel though too. So um, that's basically it. And then I figured today we'll do a little bit of, uh, I guess it's time. People can meet the owner of Creative Designs by Tiffany. I tried to get my husband to come down and he was like, mm, no. Funny thing no. is too, is he got the day off today too. And I was like, come on, you want to come down? He's so like, he's just sitting no. at home? No, he's not. He never sits at home. No. Yeah, doing always doing something. We have a log cabin. So he's sanding all the logs. He has to redo them for the this year, so um, that's you his could, project. Could have had him call in. I was going to have him. You know, he could have streamed in as a visitor. I tried. I mean, listen, I tried everything, and he was oh not having God. it. So, tell him anyway. what I can do is I can put his picture up in the corner yes. of the entire yes, broadcast and, and just we'll just talk. Just to put him, yeah. funny things. Yes, we could do that too. So I will tell him that I tried everything. I was like, you could call in. I was like, I could have your answers ready. He's like, no, I don't think that's not his forte <laughs> right now. So if you know Ben, though, that's uh, you'll you'll understand where we're yeah, coming from. Right. That. But anyway, so I'll start off with um, a couple of our little gift items. So um, this is more florally gifty, but this is for you, Dave, and you and Deborah. So this is eucalyptus, if you can see this. This is fresh grown eucalyptus. You can see the tips there. 
Um, this is just beautiful. I can't, I can't say enough about this beautiful eucalyptus at this time of year. This is the time for fresh eucalyptus. You can put it in your shower, really good aromatherapy. Um, we've talked about it in arranging and everything, but I just love little bunches like this. So we have little bunches like this. It's like a grab and go at the store. Um, you can hear it, how pretty it is. And it just grows crazy. And right now it's just about that season that it's hardened off, which is a difference than we can get it earlier in the season. But um, when it's hardened off, you can leave it out of water and it's not going to wilt. If it's not hardened off, it'll immediately you cut it and you'll start seeing it wilt down. So there's a difference in waiting. So if you get eucalyptus that's fresh grown around this area in you know July, early August, it's not hardened off yet. So um, that's kind of a process that end of August, September, you can can enjoy it because it can be dried and you can leave it like this and it'll be fine out of water. I'm so, still stuck on the hang it in the shower thing. You can't. Well, it smells beautiful and people do that. And, you know, not to say they're weird. I can't say they're weird, it just seems weird but, it's, but it, okay. it does seem like a weird thing, but it does. It's that's aromatherapy that comes up and stuff. And I tried it last winter and it does. It really smells really great in there. So it's a nice thing, but this is for you guys. And so you can enjoy that. How, at your how leisure. long does it last? A very long time. You can dry it too. So if you dry it off, it still has that little bit of a tinge of a smell. I did one of these things for, um, I think it was Frankfurt School, and um, just talked about florals. But if you take those little leaves and you break it apart, it smells really strong like eucalyptus. Or you can leave them as is, dry them off, probably like six, seven months, you'll still have them. It'll smell really? great. Yeah. Oh. So and you can break those leaves off at any time and it'll smell like that eucalyptus. Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of how they use those oils. You meditate. Just yeah. Like yeah. Um, just, yeah. So that's okay, it. Right. That's it. I love it though. And I try not to waste anything in the store. So like even those little pieces, like we talked about in arranging, I take the little pieces and I still keep those little leaves and I just have a little collection in the store and they smell great. So like potpourri, I guess. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah it's, it's a nice thing. So, um, so that's one of the little bunches things. Um, and then for gifts, um, I brought a couple of things down. Uh, so this is the giving bear. So anything that I buy for gifts in the store is intentional. So we started the gift line last year when COVID hit and basically flowers are not hard goods. So they had a time and an expiration date. So these things that I put in the store, they didn't have an expiration date. If I had to close up for two weeks or four months, <laughs> um, they would still be there. So this is kind of where I was intentional about buying things. This little guy is called the giving bear. Um, I actually... There is a Hallmark shop, was a Hallmark shop, um, a little further west of us that they ended up closing. And I I talked to the owner and she told me about this line of gifts that she had. I loved it. So we picked up a few different pieces. So this little guy, you probably can't see it from the camera, but he has a weighted hand. He has a weighted butt, I tell everybody. And then he has this cute little saying on the front that um, I won't read it all to you. Come in the store and read it. <laughs> but it's a cute little saying, and it's just a great little gift. Um, he has a corduroy ear that you can, it's his listening ear. So it's something nice for him to, you know, when you give to somebody, it's just, it's a cute little plushie. And I've had adults give it to adults. I've had adults give it to kids. So it's a really nice little gift. And like I said, we try and be an intentional with what we buy for the store, just because I think of it as, what would I buy? So that's where today we'll get into a little bit more about me and my, uh, what I think, I guess. So, so we have the little giving bear. Then we have Charlotte Candle Company, which um, she's been with me since the beginning. I wanted candles in the store. Um, and she is from Charlotte, North Carolina. Her name is Amy. And um, these are hand poured soy candles. Um, so this one is Island Vibes. You can't smell it. Wish we had smell of vision, but we we don't, unfortunately. Mm. We'll add it. So yeah. So there's um, three different sizes that we carry in the store, um, and these are the soy based candles. So they don't have that weird smoke that comes off. Okay. Like there you go. Um, it's not that weird smoke that comes off. Like if you have a paraffin wax and then it's hand poured. So I basically can tell her any sort of scent that I want and she'll send it to me. And there's three different sizes. Like I said, I didn't bring the concrete bowl with me. Those are really popular. Everyone seems to like those to give as gifts. So candles and, and flowers seem to always go great as a gifty type item. So yeah, that was Island vibes. That's Island vibes. She I has know. really cool was, ones. Yeah. That smells good. Yes. I liked it. And, um, Christmas time, there's Christmas line, a Christmas line that she comes out with. And then she does do diffusers this year. Um, we had some, I don't get it wrong, orange citronella, I believe. So they were the diffusers that kept the bugs away. I asked her for candles of those funny story. And she was like, well, candles don't really work really well when you're thinking when you're putting it outside to keep away bugs because they just melt. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. So it's just a, a diffuser. Yeah, but if you buy a citronella candle in Lowe's or something. Those True. Those, those up, do. But that's not soy. 
so this is the soy it'll melt right down so oh, okay. she does it more with like the diffuser oil so that works too and i have one in the store of that too and it works really well it keeps all the little bugs away oh, <laughs> so okay. yeah so that's one of the things and then we got in so Demdeco is some people have heard of it some people haven't you probably have heard of willow tree uh no, maybe not. Uh, well, someone probably. Well, I, mean, I know what willow trees are. Yeah, what... not actual willow trees. <laughs> so willow trees, as, as Ben says, it's the weird little figurines that don't have faces. So they're a collector's item. Um, That's just kind of sick. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can look. You can look it up. It's like collecting Dave's, clowns, yeah, right? That's it's. Come on. They're very. They're very popular though. For every like life event, they have different things. So like when you get engaged or when you get married and when you have kids, there when you buy a dog, they have all these little pieces. And so the, it's a girl thing. See, so okay. that's. Yeah. <laughs> we'll let you pass on that. But anyway, their their company, their umbrella company, is um, Demdeco. And so these finally came in. I had them for all the different lakes around and they got discontinued or just won't come in to me until next year. So unfortunately, we, that kind of sh that ship passed this year. But we have like Dalgeville, New York, Stratford, because, well, you know, Stratford is very close to my heart. Um, little spoon rest. So these are kind of some little gifty items that you can get at the store. Um, I wanted to get a few more things from the local, but personalization right now is taking a very, very long time for turnaround. So those things, if you happen to be from Dollarsville or Stratford or anywhere else locally, you can come in and take a look and see if we might have your town in there. So, um, just little gift things if you don't want to get flowers or something that lasts a little bit longer. Um, and then finally, this is one of my favorite pieces that we have in the store. And these are decent sellers for a certain age group. And I won't say what age group, Dave, but um, <laughs> I love these because I sit there and I'll, I'll read them and pick them up if it's quiet in the store. So we have these Remember Whens. And I don't know if you've seen these before, but these are my favorite because they're a little book and they're great. Um, instead of a card, like when it's their birthday or anniversary, these go great with it. So there's little um, things in here, like the national news for the year. This is 1968. I just happened that's, to pick this one up. That's kind of cool. And it does. It tells you, you know, who was the World Series champion in 1968? The Detroit Tigers. U.S. Open golf winner was Lee Trevino. You probably don't remember this. This was after you were born, right? Yeah. And the 1960s. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, Heisman Trophy winner was O.J. Simpson from USC in 1968. Wow. Yeah. See, you see these things. And then wow. my personal favorite thing to look at in each of these is the cost of living. So, yeah. <laughs> so that we don't need. Well, to know. It, well, in 1968, I think of this now because, you know, we know what everything costs now for us. But in 1968, Cost of a new house was only $14,975. Wow. You imagine that? Um, granulated sugar was 60 cents for five pounds. I, it's just, it's crazy. And I love these nostalgia things just because. Go, go to the key thing on there. You got bacon at 75 bacon. cents a pound. Yes. I mean, this is, go to the man <laughs> right? stuff that's here. <laughs> okay, Let's that's right. The, that's right. I have to remember yeah. that. Well, even a new car, a new car was 2,822. I know people that are paying that in a car payment. So, you know, that's a, <laughs> It's a month. Crazy, right, yeah. a month. Yeah. So this yeah. was one whole new car in 1968. So, you know, things like that. And I just, I love this book. And, you know, like I said, we have from, well, I started in 1921, kind of realized I don't need 1921. I can kind of phase into a little bit later. So 1921 to 2000. And um, Jen, who works in the shop, she was in there. And I said, what year were you born? She said 2004, something like that. And you're like, we you, don't, you messed that up. Right. We don't have that year yet. So yeah. we have about two, uh, 1921 to about 2000, 2001 right now, but it'll start going further, you know, closer to, I can't believe 2004, you have like 16, 17 year olds. Anyway, it's uh, amazing, but there's all sorts of different things through here and you could take a look at it if you'd like while well, I'm ch That's chatting nice. over here, but I love these. And like I said, they're a great gift for anniversaries, birthdays. You know, I sent one to my dad actually for his birthday because I said, I can't send him flowers. So <laughs> I gave him one of these. So, I mean, nice so what do you do? Nostalgic. Pick the year they were born yep. or the year they graduated from high school? Anything, or? anything. Yeah. And in the store each year, obviously. So we have the, you know, 50 year, 30 year. So it has a little block so you can see like what year it would actually be. Um, but then if you know the actual year they were born or it's an off year or something, or you can just pick one even close because most of them, um, I look at it and for the most part, they kind of stay pretty close to each year, not too much of a variation. But when you want to know actual things like specific to that year, it's really good to have that year. And it even has a calendar too. So like, you know, oh, if, you're, if nice. their birthday was May 5th, it was, you know, on a Tuesday or a Thursday. I can actually right. give you that. So there's an app for that. Is there? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm sure. See? I haven't looked, but See? I'm sure. Well, that's, you know, so this is what this will tie me right into now here where I'm going for my and more today. All so right. so this is, yeah, here we ready to get, here we get go. your right. seatbelt on. Yeah, let, me get so, the, let me get the right. deeper. No, all right. right. Get, <laughs> yeah, so, We're see, ready for that. This is good. See, I have my little uh, whatever these are. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I know. <laughs> it's just little things. So There's, That's the studio audience. Right. That's it. That We have right, so many enough, in the studio enough, audience. Enough. Yes. Well, you had your cat today. So that's yeah, my I, studio yeah, audience she today. Was in here. So, yes. Well, no. And that's what I figured I'd say today. You know, so we talked about all the floral arranging and the gardening stuff. And now we're doing the Ann Moore. And Ann Moore is typically our people from Dodgeville. Honestly, there are a few more people from Dodgeville that I'd like to have on, but everybody's just so busy. Um, quick on the busy front too, um, the floral market is kind of stopping. There's a meme going around if you're a florist that um, white roses now are like the toilet paper when COVID first started for everyone. So there's a little bit of a stall in the market and stuff. There's a again. run on white roses. Yes. And right now there's, because... I, I honestly, I think it's because there's not enough people that can work down in Ecuador or whatever, and they didn't plant enough. So well, that's there's, they're all up here now. That's true. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, true. I, you were going to start hey, this segment. I was, I, I was, you know, and that's yeah. it. It's, it, you know, I told Dave before I came in last week and I was like, can I talk religion and politics on here? And he was yep. like, yeah, that's my show. I can do what I want. Yep. So anyway, um, but luckily, I think we might have a little bit kind of close to, of the same opinions, we'll call them. So I'm, <laughs> I'm glad of that. But um, either way, basically, they, they, there's a big shortage. Um, quicksand roses. I think um, when Shazniana was on, we were talking about the quicksand roses, the colors, how popular those are. Those have jumped in price about three times. Um, so, and there also are only two growers last I heard that are growing them anymore for the whole country world. So um, those very popular roses, those sandy color roses are no longer coming in. So um, that's the kind of a market thing that we're, it's glitchy right now. I didn't even want to ask anybody on because it's a little complicated for everyone. So um, we're navigating it though. So, um, but anyway, well, yeah, like I was saying from the remember whens and all of the stuff that I buy for the gifts. I try and be intentional about everything that I buy. And then um, when we had the Ann Moore and uh, Sal and Elizabeth were on, um, you know, we talked about a little bit about religion in there. So politics and religion, everyone says stay away from. But I guess today I'll kind of dive into that's it what That's bit. when you talk in marriage. Oh, okay. Not, yeah, not podcasting. Oh, okay. So podcasting, I can do it then. Yeah. So that's uh, that's good to know. Well, you know, and the the, the I don't know, the atmosphere, whatever you will, that's going on around and stuff. It's been really hard, honestly, for me as a business owner, because if you know me and you'll get to know me a little bit today from some of the thinkings that I have. Um, so there's a lot of controversy out there. Everybody's upheaval, everybody's woke and all these great things. Um, and it's, it's tough sometimes when you have to navigate a business because everybody says you have to stay away from those things. Um, for me, in a small town, <laughs> honestly, I don't, um, as you can see. I try and stick with, you know, what I know to be is right, and I try and do it, you know, run my business off of that. So the integrity, the honesty, everything that we have in our store, that's what you're supporting when you come into my shop. So um, if people disagree with it, that's, that's fine. That's your opportunity to disagree. But I think um, at this point now, it's always good to have someone – and you know where they stand. Um, and especially in this day and age, there's a lot of uh, here and there everywhere and stuff. And so I try and be pretty upfront and honest with these things. So, you know, even like the remember ones when we have those in the store or we have these um, little, you know, things that give you a little bit of inspiration. That's very important to me because you never know whose day you're making with it and what kind of a positive influence you're making on them by having those things or having someone gift them to them. So it's very important to me. And as, as crazy as this may sound, like even when I start doing arranging and stuff, like I really intentionally think about the person that I'm making it for. And then I think of, you know, funeral arrangements. I hate doing funeral arrangements for this reason, because I think of the person. My first, I'm going to get teary. I see this is a girl. See um, I'm going to get teary at thinking about it, but my first ever funeral that I did, I was crying when I was making it because I was just thinking about the, the family and what they were going through and that woman and what she led her legacy to be. And so I really get into it in that way, I guess. You can always bring and, out the faceless porcelain. Right, that didn't stop you from crying. That, that didn't might, scare the crap out that of you. That might. But even though, <laughs> see, for a woman, if you know what Willow Tree is, you'll know what I mean. There's those little, little gift boxes and the music boxes, and it's even more emotional. So, um, but, you know, things like 
like that, that I try and think of like what that person did. And, you know, a lot of times funerals are, are older people. Sometimes I've had a couple of people that are a little bit younger and stuff. And so those things, it, it kind of gets to me, I guess, when I start doing stuff like that. So it's, it's um, one of those things that sure, maybe I could separate it, but I don't really want to because it's important. It's a person's life. And that's what your role is, even if you may not have known them, um, to try and represent what they're what they lived or what their legacy was. So um, in that sense, it's a big thing. And, you know, like I started to say, it may sound absolutely crazy, but when I first started the store um, in 2019, uh, my first, let's see, my first big holiday was Valentine's Day. And I remember crying in my bathroom (laughs) and saying, dear God, please help me. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to order this. And I ended up selling out. So um, it's those little things that, you know, I think Kathy Lee Gifford said it's little God winks in here. And so those are things that really gets me through, honestly, for my store. And that's even buying these things and how they can touch a person's life, if you will. That's what I think of when I buy these things. So, um, you know, that's my little religion bit, like I said, when Sal and Elizabeth were on, we talked a little bit more about it in depth, but those are kind of the ways that I believe now. And, you know, going into having a business gets a little political sometimes. And everyone says, don't get political on things. But for me, I always like to think of what's right. And so everybody has an opinion and I love listening to everybody's opinion, but um, you, you have to still have your own opinion. So, and that's something I think that's pretty key that some people don't realize that, you know, I'm not trying to change your mind and you're not trying to change my mind, but you have your opinion too. And a lot of times that gets lost when you're a business owner, that you just don't want to offend anybody. You don't want to lose any business. So instead of standing up for something, you kind of fall to whatever anybody's coming in and saying. And for me, see, I may lose business off of this. Who knows? <laughs> but for me, I still think that you have to have a clear understanding of what you're going for. And, you know, I don't, I'm pretty bold, I guess, in some ways, but I, I don't coddle certain things. And, you know, um, I still believe that, you know, God created a male and female. <laughs> that is a big, tough thing for me, um, sometimes, especially in my business, because that's a very blurred line. Um, so, you know, I think it's very important to, you know, have people understand that about you. And I don't bring it up if it's not something that I need to bring up, but it's also something that I believe. And I think that's a really key point in running a business. And especially nowadays, um, cause otherwise you get overrun with all the stuff going on in the world and it's absolutely crazy. So, um, you know, it's a little bit of our background, my background, I guess I should say is owning a business and kind of what I think on these things. And then, you know, we all have these opportunities because right now the whole COVID shutdown, the masking, not masking, having a vaccine, all of that stuff. And I'm not going to tell you what to do either way. I have my own opinion on it, <laughs> but I'm not going to tell <laughs> you, you what think? to do. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you what to do on it. But, you know, that's... A, Everybody else is telling it's, me. So. That's true. That's very true. I need another true. one. Yes, exactly. That's it. You know, I think it's... Uh, I hear it all the time in the store, and it's one of those things that I personally will never ask you to mask up, and I will close up if it, before I have to do that before someone comes in. And I'm not going to ask you for your papers when you come in either. Um, I think that's one of those things that, in my personal belief, is if I have to do that, then I must have to close. That must be the sign that it's, it's the end of it for me. But, um, you know, it's uh, those things as navigating a business, a new business owner, I um, I personally have a very strong feeling on that, that you have to know what you're actually believing. And and at the end of the day, um, I hope your people that are buying from you would understand where you're coming from, too, because that's the biggest kind of platform that you have when you own a business. Right. So, well, I didn't understand. See, they're saying, you know, the no shirt, no service. I mean, I didn't understand why not having a shirt on was an issue. I, right. <laughs> That's you know, I mean, unless you're judging how somebody looks <laughs> right. or it's a female. But, right. I yes. mean, but, you know, the thing is. Right. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> it. And, you know, those are little things that at the end of the day, like, that's what I miss. That's why I like these remember ones. Like, you know, some of me still thinks that even back in the day, like oh, if we were in the 60s or 70s, these things wouldn't come up. And, you know, they say, oh, maybe everybody would be, you know suppressed, oppressed. I don't know what the word is, <laughs> but maybe not, you know, because it is, it's just the way of life and stuff. And well, the, the sixties were, I mean, I was in high school. Oh, I, th- I thought you were going to say I wasn't born yet. <laughs> see, that no, no, no. I was in high school. I graduated in 69. So you yes. were close with the 1960s. Oh, see, yes. Part. Okay. So yeah. So that would, I would read that and mm-hmm. remember things, but it yep. was, it was a turbulent time, yep. but it was, I think that any of us in this age group, would look at what's happening today and believe that 
And, and of course, they say that about all old people. Uh, you always <laughs> think it was better when you were growing up and it's worse today and the kids today, right. oh, you know, man. on and on. I, I think maybe for the first generation that we're actually right mm-hmm. in saying that, yeah. that yeah. it's significantly worse today, that the entitlement feeling of, oh, sure. of this group of youth coming up, not all mm-hmm. of them, you can't say, you can't say all of anybody right. on anything, right. Right. but the majority uh, is just wrong. Yes. Yeah. And just where we've gone with everything is just the way we're treating each other uh, across the board is just Mm-hmm. Wrong. Yep. Well, I mean, you know, and we keep, so the solution is everybody keeps trying to make more laws, more rules, more this, more that, you know, we're sitting here, I, right. I guarantee we're breaking some kind of law right now. <laughs> right. You, you can't well, even that's... breathe or sit today without right. doing something wrong. Right. Yep. And uh, even though I would not consider myself that religious a person, mm-hmm. I think the original 10 kind of things that were written down yep. pretty much covered everything. And right. then when you go beyond that, you're just splitting hairs. Yes. Well, and, and you're you're leaving loopholes, right? And that's I'm sorry, that's no, just, and, and it's, it's not a religious belief. That's just a factual look at words, right? And look at yep. our laws today in the U.S. Yep. I mean, th- there's more words there than the entire Library right. of Congress of everything else, right? Yep, it's uh, true. You 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 can't you can't follow those. You can't. They're being parsed to give something some to somebody that they don't deserve. Right. Right. It's true. So, well, yeah. and that's, you know, I had talked to, um, he's, I think, I think he's the assistant DA now at this point, but anyway, when I met him and I remember him, he did a Braille speech, whatever, and we talked about it. And I said, you know, the thing that I see right now, and I'm, I'm 33, so it's, I'm on that cusp of not quite that new generation of 18 year olds, spunky kids that you can't keep up with, not quite, you know, 60, 70 year olds either. But I said, you know, the thing is, is that there's no moral compass anymore. And he completely agreed with it as a DA because, you know, at that point, you can't, when you're doing that in the law, there's, you have all these things you have to kind of line up. And I said, you know, it's it's tough because you have to have your own moral compass. And that's the problem is that I think everybody's kind of shifted to figuring out what they think is right and what they think is wrong. And for me, like, again, this is back to episode four, but for me, it's it's truly the Bible. So, and you have that law book and you, you know, the Old Testament to New Testament. Old Testament is very wordy. You got a lot of stuff in there. You have to unpack it. And then the New Testament, it's pretty simple when you actually come down to the crux of it. So those are things that like I fashion my life off of and we're not perfect. And it's just the trying of it every single day. But at the same time, there's a moral compass and a code there. And it'll say, this is wrong. This is right. This is wrong. This is right. This is how you live. And this is what the repercussions are of it. And I think nowadays we've gotten so far from that, that it's this confusing bid that honestly, nobody knows what they're doing. I mean, here we go. Well, you, this you, is where. No, but you hit, you hit the point where that yeah. DA said yep. that he had a series of Yep. laws that humans yep. had written that he had to follow right. and try and navigate, right? Yes. Yep. Which means that in the end, you're not going to come out with right. the right decision. Right, exactly. And it's the same, but I, I blame him. Right. <laughs> I think at some point we have to fight back. We right. have to say things like, you know, close to 80% of the population in the U.S. agrees there should be term limits mm-hmm. for Congress, right? Right. right. Yep. That'll never happen. Right. <laughs> because there's, instead of the 330 million of us, yeah controlling yep. them, mm-hmm. the 524, whatever, they, right. are controlling us. Right. That will never happen. Right. Yep. Um, that everybody believes healthcare is broken now and, right. and you can, <laughs> and you hear it over and over again, but you know why it's mm-hmm. the same. You look at healthcare, you look at the legal system. Yep. The DA is saying there's all these things he has to navigate, all right. these rules. Right. For, yep. for the medical community, it's all these protocols. Yes. It's not what's wrong with you, what's wrong with me. It's they have all these rules right. that have been made up that they have to navigate. Yes. Yep. So my yep. sister last week yep. snapped her femur in half. Oh, my goodness. Falling Oof. down the stairs, her right femur. It's not good. Yeah. Laid in pain for three days. Yep. Three yep. friggin' days. Most yep. of it in a hallway in a hospital. Amazing. If people... That's third world medicine. Yes, I'm yeah. sorry. That was in Massachusetts yep. or Taxachusetts yep. or however yeah. you want to call it. <laughs> yes. yep. That's unacceptable. Yep. How forget the damn protocols. Mm-hmm. Yep. What was the right thing to do? Right. Well, and that's what was your Hippocratic oath? Right. What 
what the hell is wrong with everybody? Right. Well, and that's the thing that Saying I you thought think, you couldn't get, yeah, to see that. You well, could, that's you it. Get me going and, on this. Well, no. And that's what I always think of too, is that Dr. Burke, we've talked about, I think maybe you and I have talked about before and he, I didn't have the opportunity. I might've met him a couple of times. I was really young. Don't remember, but um, there's been people that have come in the store and, you know, I know that they've talked to me about it, that if you couldn't afford something, he would slide it or yeah. he'd say, Hey, how's 20 bucks or how's whatever the day was. It wasn't just a $400 copay that you had to send to your insurance. If you were in need, he would see you. That was it. And I wish but, sometimes but he would, would... Co- he, he would cover everything. Yes. In other words, right. He looked at everything. Right. He, he tried to solve the problem yes. that you had when you came in exactly. today. Everybody's a specialist. Right. Well, I don't do that. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, but I'm still sick, but yeah. I don't do that. Mm-hmm. Go see so and so. Right. You get to so and so. Well, I don't do that. It's probably this. Go see so and so. Yeah. And you're just running a circle yeah. and you true. never you never get cured. It's true. Well, and that's the nostalgia of it that sometimes I wish that that was a simpler version of how we do things now and in everything and it, it is. It's just a bunch of Throw tape. all the books out. Right. Go back right. to that's true. Just simple. the 10. Yes, exactly. Right? I exactly. mean, yeah. you know, you treat people how like you would like yep. to be treated. Yep, that's true. What a great Hippocratic oath. Right. right. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be left in a hallway for three days in right. pain. Right. Yep. So I'm not going to let that person that's true. stay out there. I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to solve it. Right. I'm going to help them. Right. Well, and to that credit too, is I think there are still people out there that still believe this way. And I hope that they're listening to this podcast because that's going to be the only way this <laughs> gets out there. <laughs> they, I'm sure they, I lost a couple along the way tuned, right now. They tuned out but, when right. we went to the faceless <laughs> right. dolls. Right. They were that's gone. It. Most that's of them it. were gone. Once you go into that. Yeah. But that's the thing is that, you know, that's, and I try to, you know, I thought about it too. And I said, I don't know. I had a few opportunities that I could have asked people to be on today. And I said, you know what? You have to get to know the owner because I think that's a very important thing that you have to know who you're supporting and the small business because we hear all these small business drop small all this stuff but until you actually know what they're standing for and how they believe and things then you can actually get behind them and now it seems like there's even more so now today there is a huge divide (laughs) so at this point I thought of it and I said you know what there's nothing to lose on this because either way I've had opportunities to you know meet our congresswoman and, and things and I've lost some people along the way from that too. It is what it is. But, you know, those are the things that you kind of, you look at it. And, you know, I, I told Ben before I came down, I said, you know, I have this platform to talk about. And I love to talk. Everyone knows I love to talk. So I said, you know, it's one of those things. That it's, it's a good opportunity for people to kind of hear what I'm thinking and, you know, what I actually stand for without having to come in the store and say, this is what we stand for and this is what we're going to do. It's just a non-invasive type of thing. So either way, the point is, is that, you know, some of these things that happen in the world and everything, you can't control the big stuff, but the stuff that you can control, I think it's important to have a side on it. And so like what you're saying about your sister and everything, you know what's right, I know what's right, and the doctor should know what's right, but then you have all this red tape you have to go through. And then, you know, what ended up happening with her? Did she go home? Did they keep her they in the finally, hospital? No, or? they finally did surgery on her. Okay. And she's so, home now. It's crazy. It so three Days. Right. And that's it. And I'm sure it didn't cost anything, right? It's just, I don't know what it costs. I'm not even going to go there. Well, right. And it's going to go through that. And, you know, so that's the tough thing that nowadays seems like nobody knows what's right. And there's this blurred line, and everybody comes in and says, well, this is right and this is wrong. This is, you know, and then, you know, on Instagram, for example. Okay. So this is, um, you know, to me, when my husband and I got married, it was tough. Marriage is tough. We've talked about this before. Marriage is very tough. It still is tough at five Mine's years. Easy. Oh, yours is easy? Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys are older. You have more wisdom. That's why. When you're young, it is very tough. Hey, 25 and, years ago, I don't know that we were so wise. Right, right. So they're a little more tough. You have the age on you. So you, you're a little <laughs> bit more wise. But, you know, it is. It's tough. And, you know, I, I was looking at Instagram. And for some reason, some of these things, like, pop up. And I don't know. It's algorithms, I think. So if they think you're going to like one thing or one way. But long story is that you can find anything to back up what you're thinking nowadays. And that's the tough thing because you think one way and you're going to look and everything that comes up in your Instagram feed, everything that comes up on your Google feed on whatever your ads are, are going to lean you that way. And instead of saying, huh, well, this is, you know, maybe I am right. It's not, not a big deal. It's always just backing you up even if you're wrong. <laughs> and so that's my problem nowadays is that there's some things that I just think, like I said, even like the man to a woman thing, um, I still believe that God created us male and female and I will always believe that. And so there are a lot of blurred lines on that right now, especially, but I still stick to that, that you're male or female. And I've had some people come in and ask me, well, what would you do in this situation? And I said, you know, the thing is, is that I hope 
anybody that comes in and asks me anything about that, they would be able to say, well, I know where she stands. I'm not going to change her mind. So now I have to decide, am I going to use her as a florist or am I not going to use her as a florist? And that's all that has to be said. And it's not like I have to preach it to you, so to speak, but just you know where I stand. And anymore, I think that's the lost art. I don't think half of these business owners and stuff anymore, you know where they stand because no one wants to offend anybody. And so um, for me, it's that's a very important part in my life. <laughs> You're going to offend people sometimes. People aren't going to like you. But at the end of the day, if, you know, God came back today and looked at you and said, how are you doing? You know, am I pleased with you or am I not pleased with you? I ultimately want him to be pleased with me. So, um, you know, anything that I say or do or encourage people in, that's, you know, and I fail. Don't get me wrong. I fail all the time on it. But, you know, it's that, you know, YOLO. What's that? <laughs> You only live once, right? Or, you know, I'm a hipster, right? Um, but I don't even know. I, I thought a, you were with Golo and we right, were losing. No, Wait, no, I, no. I, I don't know. I, no. You lost me. Well, it's like the YOLO thing that they say, you know, you only live once. Well, you do only live once. So I, I think at this point, you, once you figure out what you're living for and why you're living for it and what you're doing for it, I think it makes it even more purposeful. So um, long story on that with the, you know, religion politics thing. But um, that's basically just a little bit of where uh, I come from <laughs> on certain things. And, you know, I I think nowadays, too, when we get into the politics of it, and I, I don't know if I said it when we were on the air or not, but, you know, when I ask for your papers or ask you to be, you know, um, vaccinated before, air, yeah, yeah, I did say it on air already. So those are things that I think, this is just me, I mean, when you're in a small business sector, you shouldn't be regulated by those things. That's your choice. That's your, um, you know, I shouldn't have to have to ask you or have to show you that I'm vaccinated or vice versa. Um, so at that point, that's where it kind of encroaches on our freedom, I think, as a as a small business owner. And at that point, reevaluate it. But um, I think those are certain things that Again, where else can you say it? But a podcast, right? Yeah. <laughs> so well, anywhere you else, know, you, you can. YouTube is scrubbing the, that's true, the that's podcast. True. Well, I, I was, I was watching it. I was like, I wonder if my other one got deleted the last time, and no. I said, no, it didn't yet. So that's good. But they could put but, some kind of a flag on there, a sure, warning, or who sure. knows what. <laughs> well, and that's the scary thing is, you know, and I think it's, uh, you know, if for anything else, I was thinking of it on the way down too that. Um, when you're 33 at my age, right, you go to school and they have all these quotes of the day now that have the kids like, do your best today and your best work and all of these things. And I thought about it. And I said, you know, when you're 33, you don't have that. Sometimes you don't have someone in your back corner going, hey, good job. You got this. You can do it. So if I, for anything else today, if you're thinking this way and saying, hey, am I crazy that everybody seems to be thinking completely opposite of me, but I stand to my standards of what I believe? you probably are okay, you know, and there is a group of people, I feel like even Dave, Dave believes like I do, I would still talk about this, even if you didn't talk like I do for the most part. Um, but well, but you can, I mean, yeah. you can, I, I do a podcast with somebody else. Yep. And we're different political parties. We get and, along great. And that's it. That's how it <laughs> should mean, be, I think. Yeah, and I mean, gets, we don't yes. agree on everything, but sure. we get along great. Sure. And that's how it gets blown out of proportion, I think, too, because you you draw that line, but you can. You can come together and you can figure it out. I had a friend, uh, he's he's older, maybe your age. <laughs> so, <laughs> wise, so he's like 49? Wiser. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, a little right. bit wiser. But he was telling me, too, on the religion end of stuff that he, you know, he's a Methodist, and then his um, he was working at one point with a Jehovah's Witness. So anybody who knows the Jehovah's Witness, is they go door to door and all of that. And he said, you know, we would go toe to toe and scripture to scripture and go back and forth. And at the end of the day, we would be like, all right, either one of us would give up or the other one wouldn't give up. And then that would be it. And then we come back the next day and try and figure it out. But it was just that bantering back and forth and they got along great. And so that's, I think, part of the beauty of it too, that if you have an opinion, you can actually talk about your opinion sometimes too. So it gives you that then way to, to, do that. And I think a lot of times it gets lost with just saying, oh, no, I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> so, so anyway, so that's a, a little tip, I guess, today for mm. our, yeah, I don't even know if it's a tip or what, but at least, you know, kind of where we stand. A but tip. we, yeah, the one, one takeaway that you could take away from this for our business is I absolutely 100 
10% believe that God created them male and female. And if you'd like to talk about it, that's a great thing too. I will talk to you all day long in the store about it. I love it. I love people coming in. I love challenging stuff. I love thinking and making yourself think too. So <laughs> anyway, so just a little bit of behind the scenes of who actually owns this business. So I'm, I'm keeping my sales guy, Brian, yes. away from your yes. store <laughs> because he'll just, just be entrapped in there. You yes, too, tra- yes. Yeah. yes. Mm. Well, that's it. And, you know, and I love the, you know, that's another thing with the small town business store. I love everybody coming in and you have the regulars and then you have people that, you know, maybe you don't necessarily believe in it the same way with and stuff. And you can just talk about it. And that's, that's what I love about it. And uh, I think that we're getting further and further away from that sometimes. And I wish we could go back to the 1968 old, old kind of stores and hanging out, grabbing a piece of candy. And <laughs> that's yeah. it. so, so yeah, anyway, that would be good. Yes, it would be. So anyway, so that was our, and more. So now you got to meet Tiffany behind it. Like I said, my husband, Ben, I, I tried to get him to come down, but he just did <laughs> not his thing to talk about it. Though he does have great opinions, um, not his thing to talk on the air. So maybe one day we'll get those down here. But um, anyway, so that was basically the podcast today, I think. So hopefully we didn't lose too many sponsors or <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> Viewership sponsors. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>